Okay guys, so this is benzene, and this shouldn't take too long at all, this isn't that big a topic. Uh, what I'm going to start off by talking about is Kukule's model of the benzene, then we're going to talk about um, how we know Kukule was wrong, and then we're going to talk about the actual model of benzene. <clears throat> so, Kukule, a um, guy with an awesome beard, lived about 150, 200 years ago, he came up with this resonance model for benzene. Resonance just means when something flicks between two different states. And he thought that benzene looked like this. So it's a six carbon ring. Each carbon will have one hydrogen, so the molecular form will be C6H6. And we've got alternating single and double bonds. And he thought that the double bonds could kind of spin around. So this double bond would go there, that double bond would go there, and that double bond would go there to make this structure here. Look, you can see the double bonds moved. But then these would spin around to go back to that one. And this is happening very, very quickly. So it's just resonating between the two. That was Kukule's model. But there was two bits of evidence which disproved his model. And the first one was when a, a young lady, I forget her name now, and this lady used X-ray crystal diffraction to measure the actual bond length of benzene. Now, according to Kukule's model, we have three carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bonds and three carbon-to-carbon -carbon single bonds. Now, a carbon-to-carbon -carbon single bond is actually quite long. If you measure the distance of the bond, it's quite a long bond. And that's because you've only got two electrons pulling your two carbons together. That's what holds these carbons together, the shared pair of electrons. And there's only two in a single bond. If I look at a double bond, because I've now got two bonds, so that's four electrons, I've got far more electrons pulling my carbons together. So double bonds are short in comparison. If I had a triple bond, like a nitrogen to nitrogen triple bond, that would be very short, because I'd have six electrons pulling my nitrogens together. <clears throat> now, when this lady measured them, she found something very, very strange. She found that all six bonds were equal. All of these carbon to carbon bonds, whether they're single, double or whatever, let's not worry about that now, but she found that all six of them were the same length. This is proper weird, this is proper confusing. It certainly doesn't fit Kukule's model. She also found that their bond length was medium. So, very roughly speaking, it was about halfway between a single and a double bond. But what does this mean? A bond and a half? Can you get a bond and a half? Very, very odd. Confused people for a very long time. So that's the first piece of evidence to disprove Kukule's theory. The fact that all of my carbon to carbon bond lengths are equal, and their length is roughly halfway between a single and a double bond. Okay? That's the first piece. The second piece uh, of evidence requires a little bit more explanation. So this is a slightly long-winded explanation here, but bear with me and we will get to the end in the end. If I have cyclohexene and I hydrogenate that to make cyclohexane, people have done this thousands of times, this is very well documented, that the delta H of this reaction is minus 120 kilojoules per mole. So, according to Kukule's model, which looks like this, as I have three double bonds, if I was to fully hydrogenate this, my delta H, well, if to break one double bond it takes minus 120, then surely to break three double bonds it would take minus 360. But when actual benzene was studied and investigated, we found out the enthalpy of hydrogenation for actual benzene was minus 208. So it's not, again, it's not quite what Kukule said. And that was the final, final nail in the coffin lid. That's what made people stop believing his theory. So how would we compare this number to this number? We well, might be tempted to say that Kukule's model had a larger enthalpy of hydrogenation. But that's not true. If we look at a number line, here's zero, here's minus 208, and here's minus 360. You can see minus 360 is lower down on my number line. 
So how I would describe this number is I would say the actual enthalpy of hydrogenation for benzene is less negative than what Kakule predicted. So I'm not going to say bigger or smaller, larger or anything like that, because that can get a bit confusing. I'm going to say actual hydrogenation, actual enthalpy of hydrogenation is less negative than what benzene said. And you might be thinking, well, so what? Why do we care about this? But this actually tells us a really interesting piece of evidence about the structure of benzene. If I draw an enthalpy diagram with cyclohexane at the bottom, so that looks like that, then the higher up in enthalpy I go, the more energy something has. And if something has more energy, then it's less stable. Yeah? If I pump to you full of energy, then you're not very stable, are you? If I take all the energy out, you become far more stable. So with this enthalpy diagram, the higher up something is, the more energy it has, the more enthalpy it has, and the less stable it is. That's the key thing. The higher up it gets, it becomes less stable. So we said, in order to change Kakule's model, which looks like this, into cyclohexane, then I need to give out 360 kilojoules per mole of energy. So it was minus 360. So the arrow must point down. So this tells me that compared to cyclohexane, Kakule's model is very unstable. Because it's a lot higher. If I look at actual benzene, I won't draw its structure yet. If I look at actual benzene, that only took two, minus 208 joules of energy. So again, minus, so the arrow is pointing down. So by comparing on where they are on this enthalpy diagram, we can see actual benzene is much more stable than what Kakule predicted. And that's our second bit of evidence. So all the bond lengths are equal, the carbon to carbon bond lengths, and they're in between a single and a double bond. Also, benzene is a lot more stable than it should be compared to Kakule's model. So based on this evidence, we've come up with, well, what we hope is the actual model of benzene. And it basically works like this. So um, if I was to draw my six carbon ring, Uh, with the hydrogens on. So carbon has got four electrons in its outer shell. Six electrons in total, two in the first shell, four in the outer shell. And what we've got is a single bond here, so one of carbon's electrons is going to be there. Single bond there, so that's the second one. Single bond there, that's the third one. And each of these carbons has a fourth electron in a p orbital. So hopefully you've uh, done a bit about p orbitals already. They look like dumbbell shapes. You've got to kind of imagine my diagram's 3D. So imagine these two carbons are closer to you than those two. So I've tried to draw it 3D. Obviously I've not got a holographic board, so I've not done a very good job. Now, we should know from your AS work that if you take two p orbitals, we can overlap them side on to form a pi bond. And just a little quick note, you spell pi, P-I. You do not spell it with an E. If you put that, then you won't get the mark. So, pi, or you can do the symbol like that. Anyway, these overlap to make, uh, I always imagine it like a hot dog bun, a pi bond like that. So, bearing that in mind, these two p orbitals here could overlap to form one of those pi bonds. But then, what would stop this pi bond from overlapping with this p orbital? Well, absolutely nothing. So all three of these would overlap, and then this fourth one would overlap, and the fifth and the sixth one. Basically, all six of these top lobes all overlap together. And all six of these bottom lobes, they all overlap together and they make what's called a delocalized electron ring. So it kind of looks like this. I'll just draw the skeletal formula now, just to save time. So here's my six carbons. All six of the top lobes overlap to form a ring above the plane of the carbon. So that's supposed to be above. And then all six of my bottom lobes, they overlap to form a ring below. 
So we have what's called a delocalized electron ring system. And that's where the fourth electron from each carbon goes. And you can, it's a bit of a smudge, but you can just kind of think about it as those electrons just whizzing round this ring. And you might be thinking, well, how does that fit the data? How, does that, um, how is that any better than Kekulé's model? Well, first of all, let's think about how benzene is more stable. So if I have an area of high electron density, so loads of electrons in the same place, that's going to be unstable. Electrons don't like to be in the same place, so they're going to try and get away and do things. So high electron density makes something unstable. If I look at Kukule's model, I've got three double bonds. Now a double bond is four electrons in the same space. That's quite a lot. So that's a high electron density. So this will be unstable because of those double bonds. If I look inside actual benzene, then all I've got in one place is, well, I've got two electrons in my single bond, and each of my six carbons delocalized one electron into this delocalized electron ring. So I've got a total of six electrons in this ring, and these six electrons are shared over one, two, three, four, five, six bonds. So six electrons being shared over six bonds, that's an average of one electron per bond. So I've got two electrons for the single bond, one electron from a delocalized electron ring system, that's a total of three electrons. Can you see now why the bond length is in between a single and a double bond? A single is two electrons, a double bond is four electrons, I have three. And that's why the bond lengths are in between a single and a double. And they're all the same size, the bond lengths, because everything's the same, everything's symmetrical. So of course everything would be the same size. Um, also what we can talk about, in fact I think that's about it actually, I think I talked about everything. Yes, that's why they're more stable and that's why the bond lengths are all the same. So uh, this is uh, benzene. Benzene undergoes loads of different reactions. We can uh, nitrate it, we can halogenate it, and that's what I'm going to talk about in my next video.